It says here, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now obviously we know this is referring to Jesus, but I, I like the fact that says a child is born and a son is given. Um, Personally, I believe that's in, in, in a reference to the deity of Christ. The child, his, his flesh, took, he took on flesh, but the son was given. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life, John 3, 16. But the child was born. And, um, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. The, you know, this is the Everlasting Father. Why, why is this important? Because the prophet, by the Holy Ghost, was confirming the deity of Christ, the equality of the Son to the Father as uh, being God. And so, therefore, he is God. Everybody say amen. amen. Glory to God. And so he's the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And, and listen, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. And, with, and listen, he's going to establish it. How? With judgment and with justice. So when, when God sent Jesus, there would be judgment, but there would also be justice. You know, um, <clears throat> There's a lot spoken about love and about, you know, how that, you know, a loving God wouldn't send people to hell. Well, God doesn't send people to hell. He sent Jesus to keep people from going to hell. Amen. But there was also justice. Sin demands punishment. It's just it, the nature of sin demands a recompense, a judgment of the wages of sin or death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so his kingdom would be a kingdom with judgment, but justice. In other words, his judgments would be just judgments. They wouldn't be radical lunatic judgments. You know, they wouldn't be, you know, bozo judgments. Like, I mean, right now our court systems are so messed up with so many whacked out liberal judges and, and all the stuff they do. They don't, they, they may judge things, but they don't do it with justice. It's not, it's, not, it's not done rightly. It's just done how they feel like at the moment. God said that the kingdom of Christ would be a kingdom that would have judgment, but it would be with justice. And so his judgments would be tempered by justice. There wouldn't be a recompense that wasn't right. Yeah. Are you here? There wouldn't be a punishment that wasn't deserved. And there would be the liberation where it was, it was deserved. So in this case, um, no one goes to hell unjustly. No one goes to hell unjustly. And, and although God loves them, he made the provision to redeem them from that. They reject it. They, 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 if anybody goes, it's because they rejected his love, not because his love will not make them not go no matter what they do. Now, he, he, his kingdom is a kingdom of judgment with justice. And so, um, understand that, okay? It has to be that way, and that's just the way you know, set up that way, because sin can't enter heaven. Sin can't come into heaven. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's foreign there. So Jesus is the son. I mean, the son is given. Son is born. The ch son is given. He's going to have a government. And see, his, his government will be eternal. God's government for, through Jesus Christ, his government over mankind will be eternal. Uh, there won't be any, you know, end of that government. There won't be an overthrow of it. There won't be a ruling that something's unconstitutional in heaven. There won't be people around passing laws and then sub subverting the Constitution with it in heaven. It's, it's already established, and it's God's kingdom, and he'll, it, it, he'll rule it forever, and it'll never end. Hallelujah. That, now, Satan can't come back in 2,000 years and say, you know, it's not fair. I want I uh, a redo. It's not going to get a redo over mankind. All right? Now, he's going to be let out of the pit after 1,000 years, but he's not going to get a redo as far as being in, in charge of everything. Okay, that Adam's deal will never happen again. Because the second covenant, the second Adam, the second man, made a, God made his covenant with that man, Christ Jesus. And Jesus will never fail the Father. 
Hallelujah. He'll never rebel against the Father. And so even if all, mankind, all of mankind rejects what God has done, the covenant's between God and the man, Christ Jesus. And so it's, it's established forever. His government is established forever. Amen? Hallelujah. So the government's going to be on his shoulders. Jesus Christ is the head of the heavenly government. Praise the Lord. And he's a government of judgment and justice. But you know, listen to what he's called. Wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. What's this mean? He won't be a tyrant. He won't, he won't run over people. You know, he won't take their Second Amendment rights away. <laughs> Hallelujah. Through subversion. Now, we, we could get on some soapboxes here tonight. I'm just going to, I better just back off that now. Hallelujah. But he, listen, wonderful. Pete, the, the, those under the government of Jesus love Jesus. He's an inspiration to them. And it's, it's not a pseudo-inspiration. It's not an inspiration based on some stupid uh, whatever. It's based on his goodness and his mercy and how wonderful he is. So humanity look, will look at Jesus and his reign of government forever. And, and just, he's wonderful. Amen? Hallelujah. Counselor, his wisdom will always function in our lives. Amen? The mighty God. There is no lack of his power. Hallelujah. The power of God in the kingdom of God. So remember, we, we talked about this, how authority is only as good as what's the, the actual power that stands behind it. In other words, uh, you may have authority. You know, I may tell you, you got the authority to go out and stop cars. But if you don't have something back of you that can back you up if they don't stop, that authority is no good. I mean, if you're the president of some third world little, you know, dictatorship and you're going to go out there and you think, well, because I'm the president of this country, I can go out and run rush out of the nations. Uh, I got news for you, Charlie. You pick on the wrong person and they'll just nuke your whole land and there won't be anything left. So his, his authority is only as good as what's behind it. But see, Jesus is the mighty God. <clears throat> what stands behind him is the power of God. And the whole, all of heaven stands behind his government. There will not be an overthrow. There won't be a mutiny on the heavenly, uh, on, on, the, on the heavenly ship. Amen. On the gospel ship. His power is greater. Hallelujah. The everlasting Father. He exists with the Father, having neither beginning of days nor end. He is, he is eternal with the Father. Amen. He and the Father coexist together, along with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And remember this, he's called the Prince of Peace. He, his government is a government that's, that's, that is noted for the peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, you know, when the angels appeared in heaven, they said, uh, Glory to God, the highest of peace on earth and goodwill toward men. And, um, you know, we, we've, we've done a study on that before, actually, where it says, you know, peace on earth and goodwill toward men. That phrase, goodwill toward men, is really awkwardly translated by the King James, it really says in the Greek, and goodwill towards, uh, and peace towards men of goodwill. The kingdom of God will bring peace to people who accept his kingdom and, and subordinate to his kingdom. Amen. It will not bring peace to those who rebel against it. But his kingdom will be a kingdom of peace because once everything's said and done and everybody's out of here and he establishes his rule and all that wonderful, glorious stuff that we get to go through and enjoy it, be a part of, he'll reign forever in peace. Glory to God. That's enough to make you say Shanda twice. Amen. And so, so it tells us he's wonderful. We really look at Jesus and how wonderful he is. How glorious he is. How good it is to be in the family of God. How to have him as master and Lord. Amen. You know, you can call him master and Lord and you don't have to worry. You don't have to be concerned he's going to take advantage of you. That he's going to misuse you, mistreat you. Um, you know, and, and it dispense of you when you become not as important. You will always, he'll always be wonderful to you. Amen. Okay. And again, we say this, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it, 
So think of this, Jesus, and I know we don't want to get into a lot of post-tribulation, post-rapture of the church kingdom stuff, but just think Jesus is going to come to the earth after, after an absolute devastation to the planet. He's going to reorder it and establish his, his authority and government on the earth. See, all, everybody's going to be thinking that the Antichrist is going to do it, and he's going to bring war and destruction, and then the Christ will come, and he will order it and establish his kingdom. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? And you've all seen, you know, I think we've seen in political in the past few years, how that, uh, how easily an Antichrist could rise and take power. Because the sheeple are just uh, oblivious to reality. In, pol in politics now. As long as you promise us stuff, as long as the media hooks up and runs with them, as long as they present what people want to hear, they'll just say, okay, and they won't even think for themselves because they've been brainwashed into the drunkenness of media imagery. How easy an Antichrist could come to power because if we look for somebody that has an answer, who has the answer? Who has the answer? Because when people start asking who has the answer. And let me tell you something. There's a lot of answers out there for, for problems like, you know, terrorist nations who want to blow a whole other nation off, blow them off the map. You can get rid of those things, but people won't do it. Why? Because secretly they hate Israel. Secretly they hate Israel. The reason stuff's being done and the stuff's not being done right is because political figures in the world hate Israel. Now, they'll go out and they'll act like whatever. And, of course, our, our nation, for the first time in my life, is not a supporter, true supporter. Of, of the, and, of course, then you've got the Jews who are so, still so blinded, they'll, they say, okay, and they'll still vote for people who are against their own nation. But the veil's over their eyes. They can't see. But Jesus, you know, um, he has a spiritual kingdom he's ordered and established. He will return to the earth and establish a natural kingdom on the earth. And he will order and establish it after the, after the absolute, what we call Armageddon. What the Bible refers to as Armageddon. And it's not in the movie with Bruce Willis in it. Okay, blowing up some asteroid somewhere. You know. <clears throat> he's going to order it. He's going to establish it. And as we said, it will be with judgment and justice. And then it says this statement. From henceforth, even forever. <clears throat> the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So that's, that's beautiful to understand and wonderful to understand that God said he's going to do it. The zeal of the Lord, he's going to do it zealously, so I wouldn't want to get in the way. You know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the, the, the Antichrist bunch that wants to get in the way of the Lord. Uh, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I, we, we have written to us, the book of Hebrews says that the things that happened to the children of Israel, and it uses this term, were written as in samples to us. Now, I, I, it's just a different way of really saying examples. You know, they were written as, as for us to look at, to learn from, and know this, that no matter how many are arrayed against you, God's for you. And that God has got more than, you know, they to be with us are more than they, they be with them. And you may look at things going on around you and all the stuff going on in the world. You may think, man, it's tough out there. It's rough out there. It's bad out there. Everything's going, going, going to Hades in a, in a hand basket. Well, it's not, you're not going to get that kind of trip there. You don't even get the privilege of riding in a handbasket. Hello? You know, it's, 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 it's not a good deal. But somehow or another, we can almost get this idea that hell is greater than heaven. And that what Satan is doing is greater than what God is doing. And, you know, uh, I got news for you. God's moving all over the earth. Now, you may, you may not see it here in America, but um, uh, a year and a half ago, when Pastor Hagen went to um, Nigeria and uh, did that, that meeting in that building that's a half mile wide and a mile deep, okay? And they estimated that two, to two million people were there, actually two to two and a half million. Now that, now listen, that's not, that estimation is the number that they, they flat out can guarantee you that there's no stretching, fudging, or whatever, okay? Talk, talk to a minister who, who was helped set the meeting up, and he said, in reality, we don't use this figure because we can't, we can't, prove it beyond shadow of a doubt and they don't want to use, misuse figures he said it was more like three and a half to five million people there for one meeting 
for one service. The, uh, the Hagans in Nigeria are, are, are um, what's the word I'm looking for? They are as honored and respected as any minister anywhere in the world you could ever think of in the history of man. Papa Hagan. I mean, they just absolutely. Uh, he, had, he got to the hotel. They heard Kenneth Hagan's name at the hotel. They lined up for autographs. All the people did. The, the clerks at the desk wouldn't even check people. They were signing autographs. I mean, they wanted their autograph, the autograph. So, um, God's moving outside of America. We think, we think you know, America's, you know, we, you can't judge what God's doing on the earth by what you see here. Right now, America has brought some things on herself. But other nations are crying out to God. He's moving where they're crying out to him. Okay? Um, I know right now we have one Rainbow Bible Training Center in America. We have 140 down outside. We have about 2,000, well, about, eight, about 1,200 students in America. We have about 10,500 outside. God's moving in the earth. And it's because the son, the child was born and the son was given. It's because his name is Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen? Jesus is being taken to the nations, and they're hungry for him. <clears throat> now, here in America, we're in a cultural battle. We know that. People are just having every kind of battle they can, you know. Uh, for the first time ever, the Christmas tree at the White House was referred to as a holiday tree this year. First time ever. It's, it's not the national Christmas tree. It's the national holiday tree. Um, because re-elections have taken place. You can do what you want to do now. You don't have to worry about getting re-elected. The, the truth comes out. So when a politician doesn't have to, doesn't have to be concerned about re-election, who they are comes out. I, I'm be happy just to have single term limits on every politician anywhere in the country. No, no re-elections, no running again, one time and you're out. Because they'll begin to see who they really are. If they get elected, you will see who they are because they're going to do what they want done. Um, but it's the national, so we're in a cultural crisis. Um, you know, stores don't want to say Merry Christmas. We've been through this over the past few years. The ACLU and then the people for freedom from religion are going around suing to have nativities taken down, Christmas trees taken down, and the schools can't have this. School, I mean, play, anywhere they can go in a public situation and, and, and prohibit the free exercise of religion. That's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're violating the prohibition clause. We're in a cultural crisis in America. Because we're addicted to everything in the world except Jesus, as a nation, as a whole. Now, maybe not everybody, but you know, the, you know, uh, our our our, pre our current president stood up in his last uh, last term and said, "We're a pluralistic nation now." You know what I mean? We worship many gods. We have many many paths to God in our own thing. But it doesn't, you know, it doesn't change who He is. And what, he's, and what he desires for us to do. We have to be more committed than, as er, than ever before to the things of God, to the work of God, to the call of God than we've ever been in our life. And not just, <clears throat> not just trust that somehow or another we're going to have, you know, you know, the Christmas season is going to come. I have a couple of, you know, have you noticed all the Christmas programs now? The movies and stuff, you know, they're, they're, all, they're all so secularized now. That God, that, that God, Jesus, anything to do about Christmas is not even in them anymore. They're just, they're just so secular. It's, it's just a holiday where we get sentimental. <coughs> so, let's look back to what God did. He gave us, the, son, the child was born, the son was given to redeem mankind, to save us from our sin, to reconcile us to our Father. And He is a wonderful counsel of the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. His government will reign forever. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, uh, we get to be a part of that, and we get to be a part of seeing the, the, what God does in the earth in these days. And so, I encourage you to not lose heart by the things you see going on around you, but be inspired to press in harder. Be inspired to be more adamant about what you believe, and who you are, and what God means to you, what Jesus means to you, what it means to be born again, how special it is to be a Christian at Christmas. Hello. If you hyphenate the word Christ and then mus, and then added another S on, which is really what it is, it is the Christ Mass. Mass is what the Catholic Church uses to declare, uh, which is really the celebration. When they have Mass, it's the celebration. So the Christ Mass is the celebration of Christ. 
and it got shortened into Christmas. Okay, so it is the Christ Mass, the celebration of Christ. All the stuff that's going on and all the business, I know you've probably been busy. There's been Christmas shopping. There's been malls and <coughs> the people are out there. They're out in the Christmas spirit and they'll ram you with their car. They'll cut in line and they'll cuss you out. Hello. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's commercialized. There's so many things going on. But you can be light because you're in the, you're in the government of the Prince of Peace. Amen. He's establishing his government in the hearts of men right now. And you can walk out into all that mess and be a part of being light, being love, being compassionate, and letting them cut in line in front of you and being happy. Amen. I mean, it's, you know, it's actually kind of dangerous out there. You all see cars and parking lots. I mean, you got to watch out. They'll just cut you off the run of your, they'll take your spark spade. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's Amazon.com. Thank God for Amazon.com. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, look over with me, if you will, into uh, Luke's gospel. Hallelujah. You know, Luke chapter 1 kind of does one thing, and then Luke chapter 2 kind of, is, is they're kind of not, they're not, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not chronological in, in, their, in their rendition, because it says in verse, chapter 2, verse 1, because right after it talks about the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit, that, that was one narrative, and now you come back with a, this, another narrative, and the same thing. It came to pass in those days, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. There have been liberals around for thousands of years. They're always wanting to tax somebody. Hallelujah. And all went to, be, you know, listen, if you understand, go back and study Roman taxing. They taxed in order to support the kingdom that they went and conquered. So they could have a, have a glorious kingdom. But the people didn't want to be taxed. They didn't care about how big Rome was. All right. And this taxing was first made under Cyrenus, was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And you shall find uh, this, this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a great, with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men, or peace towards men of goodwill. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Hallelujah. Notice get who, who wasn't there. The three wise men, the three men from Orient are. You know, they're not there. Hallelujah. We, we know the story. We know why that is, because they, they weren't there then. They were there two years later, uh, when he was two years old, about two years old. Um, but there was, there was rejoicing. The, angels appeared, the angel appeared to the shepherds and said, you know, uh, and, and the glory of the Lord shone down and announced that Christ was born. And then the host came and began to sing and, and, the, and the honor, the entrance of, his, of Jesus into the earth. Why? Why was it such a wonderful event? Because it is the beginning of the fulfillment of God's plan of redemption. That's why heaven was excited. The plan of God was beginning to unfold and to be brought to pass. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. So no, this is a, it was a glorious event. The birth, of Christ, the, the birth of Christ in human flesh was a glorious event because it, be, it set in motion things that could not be stopped, things that could not be thwarted, things that would come to pass. Hallelujah. And, the, and, and for ultimately, ultimately culminating in the redemption of mankind. Amen? Hallelujah. Isn't it good to be redeemed? I've been redeemed. Hallelujah. All right.